Lagos Traffic Radio, 96.1 FM. Maritime today is the program. And we're looking at Nigeria at 64, the maritime industry landscape. Joining me on the phone line, I have uh, Mr. Lucky Ahiz Amiwero. He's our president, national council and managing directors of Licensed Custom Agents. And he's also the member reconsidered uh, presidential tax force for the reforms of the Nigeria Custom Service. It's nice to have you join us this morning, sir. Good morning. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, how are you? Uh, we're very, very fine, Captain. I'm uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Ahiz Amiwero. It's nice to have you join us. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. On the other line as well, I have uh, Captain Alao, who's uh, President Nigerian Association of Master Mariners. Mr. Alao, Captain Alao, nice to have you join us too. Yeah. Good morning to you. Nice to be here. Great. Great. So a lot has been said about our adventure on the wilderness of discovery uh, for what we have done or perhaps otherwise. Uh, you have been in the saddle for several years and I'm going to start with you, uh, Mr. Lucky Amiwero. How would you define Nigeria in a maritime space 64 years after independence? Well, uh, Nigeria is uh, just uh, crawling. Uh, it's we, uh, I, I, I have been uh, involved in more than 160 eight government committees, nine presidential, who want to reform customs. Wow. So uh, I've been involved in the, most of the policy uh, uh, initiation and all the rest. Mm. Nigeria is uh, need a, a critical overhaul. You look at what is going on. Uh, legally, uh, uh, professionally, procedurally, and any other area you want to look at the point. Mm. Our procedures, our resources, our functions, and all the rest, we are not really rich enough. We need to do a lot of overhauling to do that. All right. We'll still talk about this. Happy, uh, we'll still talk yes. about this overhauling, even as the program moves on. But Captain Alao, you have been as a master marina for how many years? Uh, five decades. Five decades, so that's going to be 50 years. Five generations go down the line. All right, so yes. how would you describe our adventure through the wilderness of discovery for the maritime sector in these uh, 50 years of your existence? I will tell you categorically, and I'm a byproduct of that initiative. Growing up, it was very, very, very promising. Very promising because uh, uh, we had growth of indigenous ship owners. We had movements within the inland waterways and lesser participation offshore. 64 years after, uh, the reverse is the case. We have uh, more participation in offshore service industry, more participation in uh, clearing and forwarding, lesser participation in international shipping trade and inland water cargo movement and right. statement. Right. So, uh, 64 years down the line, things are not looking so bright. But let's just put it in perspective. Now, this is a country that controls about 60% of the economy in West and Central Africa. A country that boasts of over 200 million people, 60% of them, very youthful. A vast water resources, or perhaps a maritime wealth, which is touted to be the greatest in Africa. So, Mr. Miwero, potentially, we are very, very wealthy. But is that the reality on ground? How come we are potentially rich? But uh, in economic reality, we're not that uh, fine. What's going on? Well, uh, what is going on is that we don't comply to rules, regulations, and laws. For instance, if you look at Nigerian Ports Act, Nigerian Port Act, we don't have a concession there. We are talking about Nigerian Shippers Council. For now, up to now, we, we are still here to require a port regulator economic uh, regulator, which is called commercial regulator. Mm, right. You see, when you, when, you, when you don't follow procedures, national best practice, you start to uh, think out with a faulty uh, 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 procedure and process. If you look at all our systems, we don't comply with laws. We don't even, most of the laws you have are not in line. How do you look at a country that our procedures, our processes, and all our conventions we don't comply with them. If you look at Nimasa, for instance, I'm mm -hmm. happy, uh, Mr. The man that is there. Right. If you look at Nimasa, for instance, uh, the 
the matter. For the past 17 years, after the enactment of the matter act, you have we don't have the we have what they call I was I was part of it. That's what they call the uh, maritime fund. The mm. maritime time fund is provided with section 16 and 17 of the act, which is conditions of status. So for my entire infrastructures and shipping infrastructures, mm -hmm. where do you have them in nation? For the past 17 years, if that that against has been collecting that money, and that is what you see all around. So you don't have it, you cannot have any development. In America, you have the 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 uh, the capital tax. You are having the capital tax in Nigeria, and the capital tax in Nigeria that is up to like that not been this uh, able to enhance what it was made for. Right. It was for capacity building. I'm talking. I'm not. I'm not going to custom another area. Look at all these areas. So what do you have? You are having a system of 17 years without an indigenous. Uh, participation in the process and you have the money being collected by the agents. Right. You have you have the grand post. The concession you have is the lease agreement is not concession. There's supposed to be a port act to be right and be able to distribute the the, the, the concession in a port in a way that it is it behind the process of the port. But what you have is that you are having a lost angle arrangement yet comfort to the terminal operators and exploiting the situation of the country. So right. you, you don't expect uh, uh, an advancement in the country where you don't have law, you don't have process, you don't have procedure. Mm. The demand that is there is of, uh, of the uh, another area of the mining industry. Right. Like, like. All right. But when you look at what is happening, you find out that in the area of uh, 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 specialty, those area is uh, downplayed. This area is supposed to be funded by by the uh, shipbuilding uh, fund and the maritime fund. Right. Okay, the, so Captain Amiwe, I'm sorry, I, I keep using Captain for you, but uh, Mr. Amiwe, I'm going to come back to you, especially in the areas of uh, trade facilitation, which you are majorly involved in. But let, let me get back to Captain Alao. So, uh, if I'm to puncture all the things that you said a bit, we can say that we've had some marginal success without. Um, you know, really having so much emotion, so to say, in these 64 years, uh, what are the areas you think we've done well, from, from what you can see? Look, in the areas of putting institutional framework on the ground, yes, we have done well. We have enacted so many laws, acts to uh, empower, to put infrastructure. But we don't have a transport policy on ground. No transport policy incorporating tra maritime policy, the framework, so that people will know where we are going to. That is why I, was, I told you that uh, when uh, National Line started in 1959, many other indigenous companies grew with it, such that by 1980s, we had African Ocean Line, Far East Line, Polawiyo, Ashrop, Niger Brass, uh, uh, Brower lines, Ashrop lines, too many, even coastal trade. Right. That by now, everything is gone. No, none does it at least. Mm. We didn't play much in the offshore industry to which cabotage law came. And now, we are people who are participating. Few years ago, we had so many coastal tankers. We are no more there now as well because the cabotage fund is not available to sponsor them. But in the area of the service industry, we have our people getting contact with IOC. Right. In the area of the freight forwarding, the major woman or know, were dominating this area. But today, we have many players, our people in that business. That area of freight forwarding, shipping agency, must be reserved for the indigenous because they are licensed by customs, hmm. which is a, which is a, a, a cross-border industry. Right. In the inland waterways, we are dead. We were moving cargo within the waters, cocoa, uh, granite, with badges. And uh, we were doing trading from Wari, Potako, to Ida, to Lukoja. This is, these are non -existent. That's why I told you, for the international trade assessment, we, even we are different side by our FOP and CIF in the oil sector. In the general cargo sector, we don't have shields bringing cargo to Nigeria. 
we depend on foreign power. Inland water is totally dead. All right. Which is quite so unfortunate. That's why I say Yes, which is quite unfortunate, Captain Alau, that uh, we find ourselves within this realm. But getting back to uh, Amiwero, uh, you are a prominent voice, especially in the reforms of customs. So, how would you say we have performed with customs and trade facilitation in these 64 years? Uh, we, are, we are still backward. We don't perform trade facilitation in Nigeria. Trade facilitation is in on three components. On transparency, predictability, and consistency. That is what I have, you know, I'm a member of the trial committee. Mm. I'm the member of the WTO committee on trade facilitation. And uh, when we are talking about trade facilitation, we are not facilitating trade in Nigeria. We are inhibiting trade and imposing trade. Trade is supposed to be friendly, supposed to be facilitated, supposed to be simplified. I have been involved in the forefront to be able to bring in procedures to make it better. But we have agencies of government who are doing their own thing. They impose procedures. We, what we do, trade facilitation has to do with three principles. It hangs on three pillars. It's consistency. How consistent are your principles? How predictable are your principles? How transparent are your principles? Can you be able to replace that with what you have in the port today? You cannot predict when your consumers are leaving the port. You cannot predict what the exchange rate is. You cannot predict how many of the checkpoints you have all over the place. It is when you go to Ghana, Ghana is operating a tool facilitated system where you have a satellite tracking system to track down, not carrying guns at this time. We are still backward. We need to do a lot of reorganization. This is supposed to be a complete overhaul because the tool for facilitation is not in Nigeria. All right, then. What we are doing is a political uh, jingoism. We are just manipulating and talking about figures. It is not all about raising revenue. The more you facilitate trade, the more you increase investment profile of your country. When you facilitate, you talk about revenue, you kill the SME and you kill the, the small the manufacturing organization and you move them out of your country. But the situation of trade is that it must be predictable, it must be consistent, and it must be transparent. All right, if you leave there, if we don't have that, then you are, you are backwards. Nigeria is not facilitating trade. Okay, then. They right. need to overhaul the whole system. Beautiful. Lagos Traffic Radio Net 6.1 FM. Nigeria at 64. The maritime industry landmark and landscape is our focus this morning. And I have uh, Lucky Ehis Amiwero, who is the President, National Council of Managing Directors of, cost, of Licensed Custom Agents. Uh, guesting and same for Captain Tajuddin Alao, a man who has been in the industry for over 50 years, also joining the uh, conversation. A brief break. When we return, we ask the question what about our ports infrastructure? What did they look like at Independence? How many ports do we have right now? Have there been growth? And also, we'll be finding out, apart from the setbacks, what can we do to really, really make things brighter in the maritime industry? A brief break. We will be back. Nigerian shippers can so they to serve you well No matter the problem, we go solve them for you Yes, so the Nigerian Shippers Council they feel in a parole now for every level. And as soon as goods they move from port A, go enter port B with a measure within on a needle. For the Nigerian Shippers Council, we don't shop proper to fit here you weller, work with you weller, and help you fit serve your customers them better no matter where them day. As we country port economic regulator, the Nigerian Shippers Council get every every now to fit make government consider the problem when she pass them the face. Visit with office phone number four or to buy your daily show your daily lane. Papa, email us for nsc at shipperscouncil.gov.ng We website now www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng Call us on top 0818-888-8895 or 0703-584-6468 For you, we take it back, it back Nigerian Shippers Council with a meet now for the port of Nanir
Lagos Traffic Radio at 6.1 FM. Maritime today is a program, and we're looking at Nigeria at 64, the maritime industry landscape. And I have uh, Mr. Lucky Ehiz Amiwero joining me right now. Same for Captain Tajudin Alao, who is the, the National President, Nigerian Association of Master Mariners. Broken down high capacity BRT bus with mechanical fault underneath Osho the Bridge in what's Olukwesi bus stop. The good news, it has been taken off, so it's a much better drive navigating through that corridor right now. Okay then, so uh, let's get back to the conversation. Um, Captain Alao, are you there? I'm there, thank uh, you. Okay, I'm good. Here. And uh, Mr. Amiwero, are you also there too? I'm here, I'm here. Thank Great. you very much. Okay, let's I'm look here. at uh, our port infrastructure. At 1960, we only had one port, that's the Apapa port. But as we speak today, we have seven ports. So, Mr. Amiwero, is that sufficient? For a maritime nation like Nigeria, uh, it is over sufficient. If your port procedures are not perfectly in order, you will build 90 ports in Lagos. Mm. How many ports are you having in Ghana? And what is Ghana throughput? How many ports you have in Egypt? What is uh, Egypt throughput? Nigeria have lost their throughput to neighboring countries because of politicians who have imposed various principles in the port industry. We have been in the forefront to see how we can streamline the procedure so that we can be able to accommodate most of our lost cargo. And mm. our, preferred, are, our ports are not preferred. They are not transshipment ports. They are not load centers. Because we lack, when you look at our ports, they don't have rail. They don't have interland connections. We only have one mono, one mono process in terms of uh, conveying cargo from the port. That is the road. Mm. And it's one of the most expensive in the world. You cannot build place like Lekki and you don't have a rail there. That is misdirection. Because you can, when you are talking about load centers, you are talking about a center where the mega ships, a ship of 20,000 TEUs, come in and offload. So what you see now is that you look at uh, places like uh, uh, Benin Republic, Togo, uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, have taken over our traffic. Right. For instance, our, our transit trade is uh, in Ghana. Our transit trade, when well, you see China and all the landlord countries, our transit trade is in Ghana. And Ghana handles it. They have dedicated that for that. We're supposed to handle all those things. That can generate almost one million jobs. And we have lost all that. Because the principle of having a good a port is mm -hmm. not to have my, mighty ports. Right. It's to have a well-designed port with tools to be able to perfect effectively. All right. To have a millennium port. That right. is what we expect. All right, Captain Alao. Well, looking at shipping services, like you said, uh, from 1959, NNSL came in as a very, very bright option. And um, 35 years after, by 1995, all the 27 vessels were grounded due to poor management, I suspect, from your part. I mean, you were a participant at that time. But, but ever since, we've not been able to refloat another national carrier. What's going on? Is it to say we do not have the resources or what's the issue? Thank you very much. The international trade has gone beyond national carrier. We should be talking of a national fleet, a government, private, public participation, not solely. If we do, because there are provisions in the act that make cargo reservation for international trade. Not in the oil and gas, that one is flawed because we are talking of FOB for our export. For our import, it is CIF, both insurance and trade, which makes the trade to be imbalanced. Balance of trade is already uh, 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 in, in deficit. It is not in our favor. Right. If we have a deliberate act to promote national fleet, you have more. I told you before, many people came into international trade. All we all, Niger Brass, Nigerian Green, like I can mention about eight or ten of them. Mm. But nobody did now. In the coastal trade, so many things going to Dakar, going to West African countries, nobody in that trade anymore. So the act of Nimata to give ship acquisition and ship building is there. And they are collecting the money and they are not giving that money out. Which is quite unfortunate. The cabotage act is there. 
Right. All right. So you quickly, know? quickly, before we round up because of time constraints, I'm having some contributions that are coming in for you guys. This one says, warm greetings to Victor and the guests in the studios. So how can Nigeria better leverage its maritime resources to boost its GDP better? Femi is sending that one in. Uh, this one says, good morning, Mr. Amiweru. Said, what impact has the presidential task force on customs reforms uh, had it says, what are the biggest successes that you had so far? Thanks. This is coming in from Tunde in Owode. Uh, another one here says, how is the issue of piracy being tackled along Nigeria's coast? And what more needs to be done for us to achieve something good? This one says, good day. My name is... Uh, what do you call it? He said, my name is Chinedu. My question is, how can Nigeria position itself as a leading maritime hub in West Africa. All right, so gentlemen, because of time, I know there's no much time to react to all of this, but Mr. Amiwero, in 30 seconds, what do we need to do next? What do you think President Bola Ahmed Tunibu needs to do next? Next, If you do what, if you do what uh, Obasanjo did, constitute professionals to reform the whole sport industry. Okay. What they are doing is political, and they are taking over the Nigerian money. They don't use it for the purpose. Of what they want. If you look at 7% surcharge, it's been collected since 19... 19- it is not used for that purpose. It is ship acquisition is not used for that purpose. Maritime fund is not used for that purpose. Most of the people who have been there should be asked what did they use that money for? Because the money is actually enshrined in our laws okay. to do specific work. All right. And if it's not done, that you cannot you cannot develop a country. America uh, is developed because of their laws are put in place. And beautiful. Been implemented. Beautiful. Captain Alao, quickly in thirty seconds. What do you think we need to do? I next? align with uh, Chief Amiwero totally. You know, Sajay, this inner frame for Sajay, let us obey the law. Let us act on the law. Let us be, be transparent. Let us have accountability. Let us have ethnic uh, guidance in what we do. All right. Some committees, form anything, you know, whatever is on the book now, pick it up today. The Master Act, Ship Building Fund, Ship Acquisition Fund, Sabotage Fund, make the money available. Okay. Put professionals who who need people contributed this money. They are right. not benefited. We we'll leave it at that. So let that. us we'll walk li- the app. Right. And let us uh, act the talk. Okay. All right. We we'll leave it at that for Thank now, you. gentlemen. It's nice having both of you on the program. Thank you so much for connecting with us. Thank you. Okay then. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Right. I've been speaking with some seasoned maritime practitioners of North, and I'm talking about uh, Chief Aloki. He is Amiwari and also Captain Tajuddin Alao, both of them combined experience of over 80 to 90 years. We have to go. The program has been produced by Taiwo Barua. Maximum thanks to Rebecca Adamu, who is Assistant Director of Public Relations for the Nigerian Shippers Council. You can connect with the Shippers Council on all their platforms at NG Shippers. My name is Victor Terry. Have a great day. Bye. From A to B, from A to B, from love to sound, love to